Did you know that there's a secret setting on your Android phone that you can use to quickly zoom in or out on any content? Or that you can use facial expressions to literally control your entire phone? Well, welcome to 10 hidden Android features that you can use to level up your entire smartphone experience. And just for reference, every single one of the features on this list are features that I didn't know existed before making this video, or that at the very least I had completely forgotten about. And on top of that, not one of the features requires a third party app. Every single one of them is built straight into Android. You just need to know where to find them. And to start us off today, we have a super handy feature called share menu pinning. So by default, anytime you want to share a file anywhere, you'll see this system share sheet. And then every time you select a new app or contact to share to, that'll then move itself to the top of the list for quick access the next time you want to share a file. Makes sense, right? Except having it always update like this can make accessing your most used apps a bit of a hassle. So to fix that, we can actually pin apps to the top of the share menu. So we'll tap on more here, and then we just need to scroll through the list to find the app we wanna pin. So let's say Google Drive as an example. Then if we long press that app, we'll get the option to pin it. And after that point, no matter if you end up selecting a different app or contact to share to, you'll always see your pinned apps under this top row here. You can select up to four pinned apps as well, which is super handy. Now, speaking of this share list, did you know that if we scroll down a little bit further and tap on print, that we can actually print any document, photo, or content of really any type directly from our phones? Well, you can, and all you do is just select your printer of choice, tap on print, and away you go. Or let's just say I wanna read something on my phone, but the text is super tiny. Well, did you know about this feature that lets me quickly tap the screen three times to zoom in? Well, now you do. And to enable this setting, you wanna open up your system settings menu, then come down to the accessibility section, then down to this magnification option, tap on it, then enable it. Then you wanna open the settings, select whichever shortcut you wanna use, which for me is this triple tap screen option found under the advanced section. And there you go. Now, whilst we're still in our accessibility menu, if we come down and open up this switch access menu, then turn it on, then come down to this settings menu here, we can actually turn on this accessibility setting called camera switch settings, which basically lets you control your entire phone just with facial expressions. You just tap to enable it, then grant the necessary permissions, and then download the data required. And from there, you get six different facial gesture options that you can use to control your phone. So let's say I tap on this open mouth one first. You can see here how quickly it registers the face gesture, which is really impressive, but you can also fine tune those settings down here if you like. And then from there, I can set an assignment for what will happen whenever I perform that facial gesture. So I can set it to navigate home or back to quickly open my notifications or quick settings, or even to scroll forwards or backwards. And so whilst this is a fantastic feature for anyone with speech or motor impairments in particular, I can also see it as just a really nifty way to level up your phone's functionality in general. But potentially an even more powerful way to use your phone hands-free is by using voice access. This is also a feature found within the accessibility menu, but just for reference, it's only available by default on Google Pixel phones. And for any other Android phone, you will need to download the voice access app via the Google Play Store, but I don't really consider this a third party app. It's more like a default feature that requires a downloadable plugin, if you will. That counts, right? Anyway, with the app installed, you just come back into your accessibility menu, grant it the necessary permissions, and then from there, anytime you wanna use the feature, you just trigger the Google Assistant and say, voice access. From then on, you'll see this little voice access icon in your status bar, and you can say just about any command that you can think of, which will subsequently control your phone. To see all of the commands available, just say show all commands and then you can navigate through this list to see what's available. But you get all the basics like go home, open Play Store, search shelf, open Instagram, scroll down, scroll up, and so on and so forth. 
But like, as you saw, this is a potential game changer for using your phone hands-free, like for watching YouTube shorts or TikToks and so forth. And that's aside from the obvious benefit it has to anyone who has difficulty manipulating a touchscreen due to a physical impairment. All right, let's jump out of that section now, but staying in the accessibility menu once again. And if we scroll down and open this system controls option, one of the most useful shortcuts you can enable is this one here called power button ends call. It needs very little explanation, but I've got to say it can be so useful to have a way that you can confidently and quickly end a call without having to potentially turn your screen back on, unlock it, then find the call button. Now, with this setting enabled, you just press your power button and boom, call over, no awkward silences. And that is it for the accessibility menu, at least for this video. And seriously, it is worth spending some time exploring the various options available in this menu in depth, as there is a whole heap more where that came from. And if you'd be interested in me creating an entire video unpacking everything within the accessibility menu, let me know by leaving a comment down below. Okay, here's a quick, super old school feature that I had totally forgotten about before making this video, which is a special dialer code that you can use to temporarily set your phone's caller ID to private before making a call. So to do so, open your phone's dialer and enter the code hash 31 hash. Then type in the phone number for whoever you wanna call, and that will then set your phone's caller ID to private for just that specific call. I know plenty of people who need to set their numbers to private for just the occasional phone call for privacy reasons, like some of my teacher friends and family, but then they keep forgetting to disable the setting afterwards. Well, this is a fantastic solution that works on any phone, Android and iOS alike, which is super useful. Now here's a really cool, fairly recent feature added to Android that I reckon went way under the radar, but it can change your fairly bland looking, sometimes hard to decipher notification icons in your status bar from this to this. And this can be enabled for any conversation-based notification by heading into your settings menu, then into the notification section, and then by opening up this conversations option. From there, you'll get a list of any recent conversation-based messages that your phone has received, and you just simply tap on any you wanna customize the icon for, and then switch the setting from default to priority. And then by default, anytime you receive a notification from that specific contact, from that specific app, it'll replace the default notification icon with their profile image. And if you wanna customize what image is used, then all you need to do is open that person's profile in the Google Contacts app, change their image, and there you go. A fantastic way to make sure you see your important notifications amongst all of the clutter. And here's something super shocking. We are at our second last feature and we are yet to use anything found within the developer options menu, but that's about to change right now. So if you haven't yet got your developer options menu enabled, well, to do so, you'll need to jump into your phone's about menu and then find your phone's build number and tap it seven times. That'll then unlock your phone's developer options menu. And within this menu, we wanna come all the way down to this app section and enable this option here called Freeform Windows. Your phone will need to reboot for this to work, but once it has, you can then open up the multitasking menu and whenever you tap an apps icon at the top here, you'll now see this new option called Freeform. When you tap that option, that specific app will launch into a freeform window mode and you can then drag the sides or the bottom to resize it and you can drag the top to move the window wherever you like. Now, initially it seems like you can't have any other apps open behind any app that is set to freeform mode. Like if I have the settings app set to freeform mode and then try and open up Spotify, for example, that settings window just closes except your device will actually remember any app that you've set to freeform mode and then allow you to open multiple freeform windows if you like. So for example, if I set up, let's say Twitter into freeform mode, then do the same with the Google Play Store, then the same for Google Chrome, then get this, I can then launch each of those apps from my home screen and all of them will launch into freeform mode at the same time. And they are fully functional with the active app being the one you tapped on last. And what's crazy is that there doesn't seem to be any limitation to the amount of apps you can have open in freeform mode at any one time, which on a phone may seem a little silly, but on a tablet, dang, that's some serious multitasking functionality. 
And so finally today, whilst we're talking about multitasking and laptop-like functionality, did you know that you can actually pair literally any old Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to your phone and use it just like a regular computer? And the process to do so couldn't be simpler. You just set your mouse or keyboard or both to pairing mode, open your phone's Bluetooth settings and tap on pair new device. And within moments, you'll see your mouse or keyboard show up. You then select them to pair and boom, just like that, you've got a fully functional mouse and keyboard experience on your Android phone. And they literally work exactly how they do on a computer, complete with a mouse pointer. And so, you know, if you're wanting to take quick notes in a lecture or a meeting, or you just want a more computer-like experience on your Android phone or tablet, well, this is a super cheap and easy way to do so. And so there you have it, 10 hidden Android features that I reckon are outrageously cool and super useful. If you enjoyed the video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. But aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.